Before starting the engine, it's important to carry out a few checks. Visually inspect the compartments to see if there's any leakage or damage to components. Take the necessary action if anything is wrong. It always pays to be proactive and it will ultimately result in increased uptime. Look in the battery compartment. Carry out a visual check in the main pump compartment. It will ultimately save both time and money in unnecessary repair costs. Located behind the cab are the electrical box and the engine air filter. If the system is indicating full water separator, drain it in a safe container. Check the radiator and coolers for any damage. If you're working in a confined environment, check that the coolers are not clogged. Clogged coolers and radiators could result in poor performance or overheating. Follow the maintenance intervals carefully. Located behind the cab is the cab air filter. Make sure the filter is clean, especially if operating in a dusty environment. When the excavator is new and the engine has only been running a few hours, it's a good idea to take a look at the engine oil level. This check can easily be carried out from the cab by looking at the display. If you prefer to do it the traditional way the first few times, open up the two latches and the engine hood, which has a self-locking upper position. Check the oil and always use a clean paper towel to avoid any contamination on the dipstick. The oil level should be between the min and the max level. Walk around the machine and make a visual check. Take a closer look at the boom and arm for cracks, especially if you're working in extremely harsh conditions or in very cold climate zones. Check the hydraulic lines for leaks. A damaged line can create heat in the system or severe oil leakage. Check all hydraulic connections, pipes and hoses for any external damage. Remove dirt or small pieces of rock in the bucket linkage. Finally, inspect the track unit and the shoe screws. Turn on the main battery switch before entering the cab. No power can be distributed until the main battery switch is on. To enter the cab, use the anti-slip step on the crawler frame and the handrails on the cab. Always use a safe three-point grip with handrail and steps to gain access to the superstructure, consisting of two hands and one foot, or two feet and one hand. Maintain three-point contact by using the handrail and the anti-slip steps when climbing on the superstructure. As a comfortable operator is able to produce more, it's important to have the best possible work environment in the cab. Adjust the seat and the seat platform so your legs fit the pedals and your arms the joysticks. There are many adjustment possibilities. The operator's seat is one of the best, and all the personal adjustments make it very comfortable. It's important to make the necessary operator weight adjustments using the mechanical lever until you see a green field displayed in the glass indicator. Never operate the excavator without the seat belt and check that all mirrors are adjusted properly. Make sure the horn is working properly. It's necessary to have the red control lockout lever folded down when starting the machine. When the engine is running, fold up the control lockout lever to activate the hydraulic controls. Turn on the lights and the rotating beacon if required. Make sure that all lights are working properly. The automatic climate control can be adjusted manually or you can select the automatic function. 14 air outlets can be adjusted 360 degrees, allowing you to find just the right airstream to suit your purposes. 
The Volvo Care Cab provides a safer working environment. ROPS Rollover Protective Structure is available up to the EC480E. If the excavator rolls over, sit still. Do not try to leave the cab until the excavator has come to a complete stop. The FOPS Falling Object Protective Structure helps to protect the cab from falling objects. You can equip the cab with extra protection. The FOGS protective bars save the cab from falling stones or splinter when using a hammer. There are two emergency exits, the door to the left and the window behind the operator. In an emergency situation, use the emergency hammer to break the emergency exit window. It can also be used to cut the seat belt. For the best operator comfort, keep the front window closed, especially in dusty conditions. When you need to communicate or require extremely good visibility, fold up the upper front window into the cab ceiling. Make sure that it's locked in its upper position. When digging deeply, it could be useful to lift out the lower front screen. The screen can then be placed in the door bracket. Fill up the fuel at the end of the shift. This will reduce the risk of condensation in the tank and then fill up on add blue. Lock all doors and hatches. Always disconnect the main battery switch. It's recommended to take the key with you when leaving the excavator. When parking, park the excavator in parking position with the digging equipment fully extended. In this position, the piston rods are protected. Clean the undercarriage to reduce strain on the components, especially during wintertime. If you fail to do this, the mud in the chain can freeze to the undercarriage and you may be unable to move the machine. Walk around the machine and visually check it. Inspect the boom and arm for cracks and the hydraulic lines for leaks. Always use a three-point contact when accessing the superstructure. Have the red control lockout lever folded down when starting the machine and fold it up again to activate the hydraulic controls. The two emergency exits are the door to the left and the window behind the operator. Fill up the fuel tank at the end of the shift and disconnect the main battery switch. Park the excavator with the digging equipment fully extended to protect the piston rods.